Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay, and guys, today I have got a book review. It's been a while since I've done a book review, but I figured I loved this book enough to not vlog about it, but definitely enough to at least tell you that you should go and read it, and here is why. So this book is The Girl Who Chased the Moon by Sarah Addison Allen. And I listened to this on audiobook and I just had the best time. It was exactly what my mood was asking for. And honestly, I've read, I think this is my third Sarah Addison Allen book just this year. And it has yet, she has yet to fail to displease me. I just love her books. And honestly, guys, I'm here to defend what we call chiclet. Yes, I heard, or rather I read someone, um, someone's review on Goodreads or on YouTube or something like that, and they called Sarah Addison Allen's books chiclet. And I don't, I don't think that they were being intentionally derogative, but I was just like, what is chiclet? That's rude. <laughs> I just feel like that just, isn't a term that I would consider Sarah Addison Allen. I think she has considerable writing um, skill for her genre and I just don't know why anyone would say the term chiclet anyway. Anyway, rant over, let's get to the book. So this book is specifically focused on two women. The first being Julia Winterson. She is an adult and she used to live in the town of Mullaby, North Carolina. And she returns after her father's death to sort of take care of his affairs and specifically his restaurant, where she plans to stay there no more and no less than two years to get enough money to sell the restaurant at a profit and then leave this dusty hometown of hers in her rear view. The second girl is Emily Benedict and she returns to, or she comes to Mullaby, North Carolina because it was her mother's hometown and she just wants to find out why her mother left it in the first place. And she goes to live with her grandfather who is a bit of a recluse. So why I loved this book. First, let me tell you, I'm gonna give it five stars. And for those of you who are not convinced by Sarah Addison Allen's books, that probably is an excessive rating, but I don't care because I enjoyed this so much. It's not a super like philosophical, let me ponder life book, but it is definitely an enjoyable, fantastic book that I thought really struck some chords in my heart. And that's why I gave it five stars. So in The Girl Who Chased the Moon, um, Sarah Addison Allen does what she normally does in most of her books and uses uh, magical realism themes in a sort of playful and light way, but also in a way to sort of further her themes of exploration of grief and family ties and family history and ultimately self-exploration. And I enjoyed it so much in this book. I really loved the two main girls. I thought that they were really good sort of like, um, not necessarily foils, but they weren't similar to each other enough to, for it to be boring. Um, mostly because Emily Benedict is a 16, 17 year old, I think. And then Julia Winterson is close to 30. And they both have their own different journeys as to, or different histories as to why they came back to Mullaby. But they come together and form a friendship and relationship that, you know, just really, made the book so whole and I really loved it. And I really feel like a lot of Sarah Al Addison Allen's books, especially this one in particular, is very good at exploring female relationships, whether it is between sisters or mothers or just friends. And I'm really into that and I don't know why, but it just brings my heart so much joy to read about it. Another thing that Sarah Addison Allen's Oh God, her name. <laughs> Sarah Addison Allen does is she uses it. Ugh, she uses, now everything is twisted and I'm tongue tied. <sighs> Get it together. Another thing that she uses magical realism for or with is food. She loves mentioning food in her books and it's 
fantastic. As someone who is a greedy eater, I am into it. She uses food as sort of a device to deliver her magical realism themes and it is really just, it just makes me hungry and in the physical and metaphorical way, like I want more of the story because of it and then I want whatever she's talking about in the book and it's just a good time. Another thing that she tends to do in her books and then also, and specifically this book as well, she likes her books set in the South. I think she's much of a regional writer. She may be from North Carolina because that's where all of the books I've read of hers are set. And I love that. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with books that take place in North Carolina. I mean, I've been here for over um, a decade now and I just love it every single time. I just love seeing my state in fiction and I love living in the south honestly it's just a really nice place to be um most of the time when it's not humid and you know other things <laughs> um another thing that i really love about this particular book in general and just sarah addison allen in general is that she really is character focused and i was reading some reviews on goodreads for the girl who chased the moon and they were saying that like she digs too deep into character history and personally I have no problem with that. I'm very character driven when it comes to the type of books that I'm drawn to. I really need to understand why a character um, has the motivations that they do, where they come from, why are they choosing these particular choices, why they're interested in these particular people, why they become these people. I really love a good backstory and Sarah Addison Alice ugh, the author um, really delivers on that front. I feel like she really fleshes out all of her character arcs and for her books being so short, props to her, like bravo, man. So the only cons that I really have about this book is that, or her books in general, I guess this is just a review on Sarah Addison Allen in general. I don't know how it turned into this, but here we are. Her books are very similar, let me just say that. They have very, they have a lot of recurring themes, so if you don't like that in an author, well, might not be for you, but I enjoy it. I would say that her books tend to sort of lack diversity in terms of her characters. I think this particular book is like the first book that I've read of the three books that I've read where she maybe I think mentions an Asian character um, but I, I don't actually know for sure because I think it was only mentioned once and very vaguely um, and that's my biggest complaint with her writing because I mean we could always use a little more diversity in some fiction and another thing too i guess this is not a con for me but maybe a con for you like i mentioned she sort of tends to recycle premises small towns north carolina magical realism tends to deal with food and tends to just continuously explore female relationships with men sort of on the sideline but still an important part of the book i personally enjoy it i don't really think it's a con but i figured i'd mention it because it is just something that repeats in her writing another thing too that i've noticed is that she tends to um sort of explore class disparity between like the people that are the have-nots and the have-a-lots sort of thing i think she does it well in the sense that she tends to um, focus on I guess humbleness I don't know I don't know I don't think it's a bad thing um, but it is sort of a recurring theme I loved the girl who chased the moon because it just it gave me all the right feels and how am I going to explain this to you by not saying that over and over again honestly when I when I finished the book all I wanted to do was read it all over again. I just loved the main characters and their history as it unfolds, as they discover more about themselves as they are living in Mullaby, North Carolina. I understand, I'm sure everyone can understand what it's like to sort of be on the outside of things, whether it's not being in the popular group or if it's being new in town or new to a class or new to a job. And I think that this book explores that very well and um, still manages to keep things light with very interesting side characters. And I think especially that one of the main characters, Julia Winterson, the older one, she has a very interesting backstory that really just pulled at my heartstrings. There was like, 
in this book there was a very good balance of sad things and happy things and I wish that I could explain that in more articulate and exciting terms but if you're looking for something that's a little lighter but also still hits you right in the heart this is a good book for you if you like magical realism if you like reading about food like I do it's a thing I don't know I love it but yeah I I would recommend it highly it was a five star read for me personally I'd love to read it again I might do that like this week yeah that's how much I enjoyed it Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this book review. Let me know down in the comments if you've read anything by Sarah Addison Allen or if you've read this particular book. And let me know if you have any more recommendations for me. Hit that notification bell so you always know when I've got good things coming to you and don't forget to subscribe. Bye y'all.